on, fellow A plusers. It is I, your more phenomenal host, back once again as we've got ourselves a brand new episode today. As we're going to be getting into the Yodana special, finally wrapping it up for this Kara Major spinoff. Part two. Uh, now, actually, back in September, uh, we did the review for part one. So if you guys happen to miss that, go ahead and certainly check it out. It is up on our YouTube channel. And it's taken me, what, like three months uh, to finally get the opportunity to sit down and watch this particular video, uh, this particular episode for part two. I had such a great time getting the opportunity to part, watch part one to the point to where it really floored me and actually kind of surprised me in regards to what it turned out to be. Uh, regardless, I actually went into this special expectations really low and I was thoroughly surprised and the opportunity to finally get to sit down and finish this particular spinoff series the only thing I can ask for out of this is can I get some more Yodana? And I'm really hoping that we certainly do, especially considering the fact that, believe it or not, this episode ends with a to be continued uh, with a big gigantic question mark. So um, a lot of speculation as to whether or not we're going to get ourselves a part three. I don't know if they ever announced it or if it's just still out in the air, but they definitely teased it. And I'm really looking forward to it, especially after just the amount of effort and time and just how I walked away with this, just thinking this was such an incredibly beautiful story story, surprisingly, uh, with a great balance when it comes to action and some incredible, incredible performances. So um, first and foremost, shout out to the main actress that plays Yodana, Nashiko Momotsuki. Absolutely incredible. I'm not too familiar with whatever else she's certainly been in, but I would love to see more from her. Not because of the fact that I honestly am in love. I'm pretty sure I've got a little bit of a crush on her. I would like to see exactly what else she's certainly capable of, especially with the actress that plays um, Akaki Hara in here. You know, they got themselves a very sweet, sentimental, and emotional conclusion to this episode between these two after everything that they've certainly been through. And you really get the opportunity to see like what their range is. Um, and so for me, I definitely would love to kind of explore their careers forward because uh, I think there's a ton of potential in there in regards to what they can certainly do. So um, if you guys are familiar with any of these two actresses and anything that they have certainly have been in also, please go ahead and let me know in the live chat or the comment section box below after this particular video airs. But um, fantastic special. I honestly think that, you know, while um, Toei has definitely given us some really great things in regards to spinoff, special episodes, episode zeros, movies and things things like that. I don't think I've ever been as moved by a, a spinoff or a special since like Super Sentai Strongest Battle. Like for me, believe it or not, the Yodana special is probably like my fav my second favorite thing that they've done outside of a main series. And I think that's saying a lot considering all the stuff that we've certainly have watched together. Um, so I'm, I was a really big fan of this, guys. I really walked away. If you haven't had the opportunity to check it out, I certainly would recommend the Yodana special, especially if you guys were big fans of the Kara Major series. I think they do a great job of bringing over that, um, uh, I don't even want to say the lightheartedness of this because this very much is a special where it's time to put the kids to bed. You know what I'm saying? Like they definitely push the envelope for sure, whether that be just language, action, blood, violence. I mean, it's all there. It's all. It's not just um, beautiful women in made costumes as they pushed in the trailer. I mean, there's definitely a lot more in this. But um, a couple things that we definitely have to talk about in here because the 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 idea of this special is to really allow um, Yodana to learn emotions, and she winds up unlocking a bunch of feelings in this episode. The first one, sadness. Um, she's definitely felt that one before, getting the opportunity to see Kakihara crying over the capturing of her brother and things like that. Um, she clearly didn't know what it was until now, and the idea that the idea of sadness takes her back to remembering uh, Emperor Yodan sort of betraying her towards the conclusion of Kara Major. I mean, we get to see practically half that season of the loyalty that Yodana winds up getting, um, giving towards Yodan, and a way to see that um, she's just kind of handled and mistreated and tossed aside and destroyed by Emperor Yodan you know, definitely um, brings up some really terrible emotions for her. And for her to tap into the sadness, it does get to the point where it literally breaks her in this episode. Like, I thought it was actually really telling at the idea of how sort of um, comatose she almost kind of became, right? Like, nobody can get to her. Kaki Hara couldn't wake her up or pull her out of this level of depression that she sort of just sunk into realizing what that emotion was that she's been feeling this entire time and how betrayed she certainly was 
was. So I thought the idea of her learning sadness was really compelling, honestly. She even gets the opportunity to learn a little bit of anger in here too. Now, whether or not that was anger that she built up towards Yodan after realizing the betrayal that she had to put herself through, or if it was the anger of everything that Kaki Haro was, come, was, was experiencing, the fact that she comes out of it and she says, For, I, I want to kick all their asses kind of mentality. I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, you don't want to make Yodana angry. Move over, Hulk. You haven't quite met Yodana yet. Uh, so I thought that was great. Getting the opportunity to experience joy, right? A good feeling too. Even the idea, I think she, you know, the idea of joy, but also seeing that joy can bring tears, right? Like there is such a thing as crying and being happy at the same time or tears of happiness, if you will. Um, so I, I love getting the opportunity to see when she learns it, especially at the moment that she winds up learning it sort of thing. I mean, the idea of sacrifice and what you're giving up to help somebody else really does go a long way. And so for me, I truly love the growth of Yodana in here. I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, to go and just see the story of Yodana from Kara Major, how she has a really hard time and difficulty of not understanding emotions and feelings and when to express those or even how to express those correctly to going into this special and really making Yodana finally a fully fledged character that can now experience things right and feel things for herself that's truly going to go a long way so for me look I'm gonna be honest when I say this I probably could sit down with like a 40 episode Yodana series if they ever wanted to go ahead and go that route. I think the idea of her connection to Jodenheim could definitely go ahead and bring forth a ton of great characters, maybe some returning characters. Now that we have somebody that is on an, um, the emotional spectrum now and things like that, I think it just opens up a ton of opportunities for her if they certainly wanted to go that route. And who knows what route they go, right? Because the very less, the very last thing feeling or emotion that she doesn't learn in this episode, but is at least teased, right? Because when she does go back to like the purgatory aspect, the guy, the gentleman says, hey, listen, if you learn all these emotions, you have the opportunity to be revived. But the one emotion that she's hasn't yet achieved is love, ladies and gentlemen, the power of love. For some reason, I want to break out and sing that Chicago, is it Chicago that sings that song? Um, the Power of Love? No, I don't think it's Chicago. The Power of Love is on uh, Back to the Future. It's on the Back to the Future soundtrack. That's the power of love. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to the Yodana special, the fact that we have Tommy Tomo in this spinoff also, this special, not really used. I mean, clearly used as maybe like a cameo for some brief um, comedy sort of moments and things like that. The idea that Yodana needs to learn love and they tease the idea of Tommy Tomo might have might have happened if heard a voice saying that somebody call my name sort of thing at the end and then just going straight to the black. I'm, I'm kind of curious if they're finally going to go ahead and go down that path or if that's just a tease and us as a viewers have to sort of sort of connect that dot, right? Because one of the things that we've always known, Tommy Tomo's always had a crush on Yodana from the moment that he's absolutely met her. It sucks at the fact that she turned out to be a villain, but it's still there. You know what I mean? Um, and then on top of that, um, the fact that... Um, they even bring it up again in here as Juru winds up poking fun at Tommy Tomo. Like, hey, you liked uh, Yodana at one particular point in time. And he didn't want that to be brought up again whatsoever. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. But it is teased. So maybe we get ourselves a part three to this Yodana special. But for me, guys, I would love... Look, I doubt that it's going to happen. But I could honestly take an entire series of Yodana if they certainly wanted to. Maybe with some Kara Major characters. Hell, maybe give me a Kara Major season two uh, if you ever decided to go down that road. But um, the possibilities are certainly there. But um, I, I do want to talk about the main storyline in here, though, with Kaki Horror, right? Because their partnership is truly key in this episode. Um, we get the idea of seeing Kaki Horror feeling a little bit sluggish as her life force sort of begins to drain unbeknownst to her. Um, she's continuing to deal with this corrupt cop who's secretly working with the Yakuza who winds up having her brother and in exchange for her brother she he wants back like the evidence um, that she certainly has 
on his phone sort of uh, sort of thing. So um, I, I continue to love that storyline of the idea of her having to kind of save her brother. But really, the dilemma comes when we've got the guide uh, from the Soul Administration Department from Jodenheim that comes down to Earth to go ahead and capture Yodana. And he's actually the one that reveals Yodana's plan to Kakihara, that this entire time, she's been draining your life force energy so she can get her body back and you perish, in other words, right? And for me, it's yet another extreme betrayal that Yodana is a part of, but this time being the one doing the betraying, right? I mean, you know, you just watch their relationship grow in episode one, see what they've been into, at least up until that particular point in part two also, and to kind of come to learn that the person that's been helping you out has might have been helping you out for selfish reasons just to simply keep you alive so that they can take your body I think goes a really long way. And I think the fact that Yodana now sees the betrayal that she's given to somebody and the sadness that comes along with it and understanding what that pain is like. There is a brief moment in here when Kakihara is like really approaching her about what she's trying to do and get an opportunity to see Yodana kind of stumbling over her words, right? Like trying to excuse her way out of the situation, but not knowing how to put the words together, right? Like really fumbling over herself, realizing, yeah, what I've done is probably a jerk ass move, right? Like especially after just the bond and the partnership that these two ladies have certainly, um, come up with it's one of those things it's like yodano almost knows that she sort of fucked up the situation you know what i mean so um i thought that was just really great and then getting the opportunity to see yodano learning her lesson after being taught all these different emotions she's experiencing him and finally understanding them now and the idea by the end of this episode to make that selfless act right to make that sacrifice of this is somebody that I've truly grown to care about. She's my partner, um, and I've certainly have done her wrong. And I know that pain of what it means to be done wrong by somebody that you've you've become to trust and become close with, right? And so the fact that she winds up pulling out that life source um, bridge or whatever the case might be, um, using whatever leftover power she has to save Kakihara and her brother, uh, saving the day, and then also sacrificing herself very selfless act. And again, it's one of those things where I find myself at the end when when I'm watching this sacrifice being happen and Yodana expressing her feelings and you've got Kakihara who's forgiving her and making up with her sort of thing. I got goosebumps, man. Like I, I got chills because of one, the amazing acting and performance that we got from both of these ladies, but just the emotional ride that the writers have put you on to truly care about Yodana in a completely different fashion now that she does understand emotions and is expressing them and feeling them for the first time, if you will. And I think that's just a really cool um, concept uh, for them to go ahead and tackle for this particular special, seeing her sacrifice herself and all the lessons that she wind up learning at the end of the day. So just, just brilliant, man. Just brilliant in regards to the partnership because it honestly not only has changed Yodana, but it also has changed Kakihara to that extent as well. Um, granted, there is still, of course, that rudeness and that meanness towards her a little bit, um, you know, at the end of this episode, especially when she winds up getting on Tommy Tomo's case. But it is one of those things you do see a little bit of a more a different side to Kakihara that I think will rub some fans the right way if you know it just they just if they just happen to not be the biggest fan of her sort of thing. So I really love what we wind up getting in here. But also a quick quick honorable mention, man, the action in here continued to be sick. Like I'm just so impressed with the second unit directors or whoever the fight choreographer was for this. Uh, I know I've seen them in countless other Super Sentai series just off the top of my head. Um, but man, they they truly delivered. Again, this was like Yodana as John Wick. I'm talking breaking bones. There's even a scene like where she holds up somebody to use them as a shield as, as they just start barraging bullets down and you just see the blood splatter and stuff. I mean, Yodana did take took no prisoners in this particular um uh in this particular special and I absolutely lo absolutely loved every single minute of it. Um and it was kind of cool being the opportunity to see Yodana at the forefront, but then times Kakihara also, right? Like from the viewpoint of the corrupt cops who they're seeing is Kakihara and us as a viewer 
the majority of the time we're seeing Yodana, but Kakihara definitely does get in some of her own licks and action. And so there's a really great techniques that they use in regards to just quick editing, um, swinging somebody in front of the camera, right? And then editing it out and placing Kakihara in. Um, so one minute you're seeing Yodana, the next it's Kakihara's body that's being used. Uh, I thought it was absolutely cool. I mean, even the gunplay, like they did so many great things when it comes to just hand-to-hand -hand combat. The idea that they even allow Yodana to pick up a gun, um, seeing some of the gunplay and how she's using people as shields and the explosions and stuff. I mean, damn. Damn, I mean, just impressive stuff. Even the powered up boss battle that we wind up getting in there also. A great conclusion, if you will, getting to see Yodana put that whip uh, and that, um, I can't remember what the name of that big old like axe looking thing that people use on crops. I can't, it's something like the Grim Reaper usually carries around with them. I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now, but great stuff, man. Um, from action to emotions, to great performances, great story. This Yodana special actually had a lot more than I expected, and it's something I certainly would recommend to you guys, especially if you were big fans of either Yodana or the Kara Major series itself. It's like it pushes Kara Major to an R-rated level, if you will. So absolutely great stuff. But guys, listen, if you've had the opportunity to go ahead and check out this Yodana special, what did you guys think let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below because at the end of the day, these are just my A-plus opinions, but I definitely want to go ahead and know yours, guys. And as far as what's next for me in regards to reviewing things, um, I am loving that tokusatsu sort of fan club that they certainly have going on right now. And I think the, 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 the last couple things that I need to tackle outside of the 10 Gokaiger movie it's probably the Real Soldier Masters. Um, I think they have like a two-part special also. We definitely will be tackling that. I won't put a timetable on when that's coming, but it's definitely coming. So definitely go ahead and wait around and check out for that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do us a big favor. Hit that subscribe button, guys. We continue to grow. We're over a, over a thousand subscribers right now. So continue to support the channel and join our family. Uh, and I guess until next time, guys, do me a big favor. As always, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other and keep it A+. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.